The reason that I was driven towards the epigenome was because of the sirtuins. The sirtuins, the, the SIR in the word sirtuin stands for silent information regulator. And there's information in that word. So it was, it was staring us in the face for 20 years. Um, and certainly in yeast, when we first discovered the sirtuins, it was about gene regulation. But then the field mostly forgot about that discovery and it's come back um, in recent years. So the sirtuins are part of this whole process of loss of epigenetic regulation of the genome. The sirtuins normally control which genes are on and off to make you stay young and functional and healthy. And they, they move away. They get distracted by, di by damaged parts of the cell, like a broken chromosome, and they move away. And then we see that they don't always go back to where they came from. Like it would be um, like a tennis match. The balls are going back and forth between players, but sometimes they get hit out of the court and get lost. That's the sirtuins. So they're intimate links. So by taking NAD, you might be uh, stabilizing the epigenome and slowing down your aging. We have some results in mice that indicate that seems to be true. Um, and there are other ways, actually, we think to slow down the epigenetic changes in the body. Uh, one is uh, alpha ketoglutarate just came out as a, a remarkable study in humans that even reversed human age by, uh, it was eight years uh, in seven months or seven months measured by the DNA methylation clock. Though the caveat is that the math that they used is different than the rest of the field. So there's still the skepticism, but even if it's only two years, uh, that's still a big deal. Cause remember to be immortal, you only need to go back one year every year. Uh, so it, it's a big deal. We're actually at a point now where I think that we're starting to see real human reversal of aging that's believable. Um, but yeah, to, to get to uh, the cancer part of it, the, the CMIC gene that we left out of our Yamanaka reprogramming for aging was the key. And that was the, the breakthrough that led us to be able to partially reprogram and make the cells functionally younger, but not so young that they forgot their identity. And so we call this process of aging, we call it X differentiation, which means that the cells lose their, their status, their knowledge of what they should do. And then we call it redifferentiation to bring back their identity. So brain cells wake up and go, oh yeah, excuse the pun, but I remember that I was supposed to be a nerve cell. I've been behaving like partially a skin cell and a kidney cell for the last few years. That's aging. And then the reset is that, that bringing back the memory of how a cell should behave. But we don't bring it back so far that the cell um, goes way back to, to being primordial and doesn't have its identity erased, which was the key. And we think it was the CMIC absence that was, was great uh, and the real trick. Um, but what we're working on now, I'll just give you a preview, is that we're looking at ways to reprogram the body without genetic intervention by looking for molecules maybe it's a plant molecule out there or a few combinations of those that could reset the age of the body. And that's, that's truly been the dream of humanity probably since we first became conscious. And so I'm not saying we're there yet, but I'm saying in principle, we know how to do it.